Hello, and welcome to the first season of Digifox Studios' new original podcast series, The Blood Drawn Chronicles. Brought to you in part by Cool Comics and Games, Lee County's largest comics and gaming store, and the generous contributions of audiences like you. Thank you. The Blood Drawn Chronicles Season 1, The Manuscripts of a Valpyr, stars Nelson Ventura as Myrick, son of Meyer, Alyssa Kalugden as Karina Gallo, Paul Roberts as Lord Dragon, and Sterling Torville as Lord Tyrus Godfrey. To view the full cast, crew credits, and more, please visit www.digifoxstudios.com forward slash TBDC. On behalf of everyone here at Digifox Studios, we want to thank you for listening, and now our story begins. If you're reading this, I bestow a word of caution to those faint of heart. This book contains a record of events that occurred, and acts which I've committed during my time in the world of man. I am Myrick, son of Myr, and these are the manuscripts of a Valpyr. You're awake. Good. Where am I? Where's Dragon? He's long gone. We're inside one of the houses in this town. You've been out for about two days now. <laughs> Might I ask what you find so amusing? This is the second time now I've woken up to find myself bound in chains. Yes. Well, you left me with no choice. Is that so? I pulled you out of the water. When we finally reached the shore, I was in awe of the condition you were in. Your skin had melted off. Your muscle tissue was barely clinging to your bones. You were dead. All that was left was to give you a proper burial. Why didn't you? I did. But by the time I finished digging your grave, your body had dried. What I witnessed next was astounding. Almost instantly, your body began to heal itself, and for a brief moment before the pigmentation of your skin returned, I saw what you really were. Your skin and hair were as white as the clouds in the sky. You have fangs on both the top and bottom of your teeth. You're one of them. Go on then. Do what you must. Though you might find it quite difficult to sever my head from my body. Of course. I don't have to tell you that, do I? How did you... You might have thought you wiped the evidence clean, but I can still smell my blood on your blade. You found out the hard way my bones are stronger than your steel. I imagine that is the reason you had me bound to this bed. I tried everything. Garlic, holy water, silver. Nothing that harms them can hurt you. I looked through the bag you left behind in the church for any clues as to your origin. All I found was a bottle of clear liquid, two books written in gibberish, ink, quills, and this. The music box. 
What are you doing in possession of one of Woodrow Carley's inventions? Woodrow Carley? Even a toddler can recognize the initials WC embossed in gold right in the center of this box. You're going to lay there and tell me you were in possession of one of the Gallo family's fiercest enemies' inventions and you had no idea? I'm willing to bet it was Mr. Carley himself who managed to give you such a wonderful disguise. He made you very handsome with black hair and blue eyes, so as to what, seduce me, then kill me? If what you think is true, what is your next course of action from here? You don't know, do you? You've already exerted every possibility you can imagine to try and kill me, or so you say. Here's what I believe. You didn't try that hard to kill me. You were curious. The garlic, the holy water, and even the silver were simple experiments on me to try and discover what I am. You brought me here and tied me up, waiting for me to come around, knowing full well I would not harm you when I woke. You think too highly of yourself. Do I? Tell me, if you were truly trying to kill me after discovering my true form, why did you not simply toss me back into the sea after all else failed? I wanted answers. And then what? You were going to unchain me and walk me back to the ocean? No, I don't think so. What I think is part of you is thankful that I saved you. The other part is your paranoia in the great mystery that is me which after you found that box within my belongings is just recently taking over. You needn't fear any longer. I shall ignore your previous acts and focus solely on the fact that you saved my life, Miss Gallo. With all gratitude aside, the laws of House M are quite clear on the matter. A life for a life. I am in your debt. And as such, I shall repay that which is owed, by unveiling the mystery behind my origins. How could I trust that you will speak the truth? The same way I can trust that you have no true intention of killing me. Agreed? Agreed. Who are you, Mr. Meyerson? The tale of who I am can be found in the smaller of the two books you found in my satchel. It is a record of my time in this world. My own personal manuscripts. I cannot read the books. They're written in symbols I can't decipher. I know. It is the same with me in the writing of man. Then how are you able to speak our language? If you remove my gloves, you'll find I'm wearing a gold ring on my right hand. Remove it. The ring you now hold in your hand gives me the ability to appear human to humans. Without it, well, this is my true form. The white-skinned, devilish figure that I am. So, this is the real you? Yes. Now, should you take off my other glove and remove the ring on my left hand, you will find we will no longer be able to communicate. The ring on your left hand grants you the power to speak every language? Somewhat. Rather, I hear every language in my own native tongue, and when I respond, you hear me in yours. That would mean if two people of different languages spoke to you at the same time, you would hear them both in your language and respond back to them in both of theirs, without knowledge of what language you're speaking. It happens quite often. The last time was between a Frenchman and a Bosnian. How did you come about this magic? I forged the rings myself on my world. You see, Karina, I came here for a specific purpose. I came here to kill the father of vampires, Count Diophilus. I regret to inform you that you've come on your quest rather misguided. The true origin of the vampire has been exposed for nearly a century now. Both the church and the Gallo family have evidence that reveal the eldest known vampire to be Alicaster Lovejoy. 
he is the one believed to be the true father of the vampires. So you see, this count you seek cannot be who you claim him to be. I'm afraid your knowledge on this matter is hindered by your ignorance of my world. Count Deophilus, son of Dorum, holds the title Father of the Vampire. And like myself, he too is a Valpyr. Explain yourself. On my world, my house rules what is known as the Eastern Lands. To the south our rivals stand, members of House D. For millenniums, both houses have stood at war with each other. My grandfather, Matthias the Great, son of Morpheus, fought the members of House D longer than any other member of House M. Upon his deathbed, he announced his final wish to both his sons. The fall of House D. Both my father and my uncle succeeded in fulfilling his wish, but not before the head of House D, Count Diophilus, escaped to this world. What are you telling me? When my family stormed Castle Diophilus, it was too late. The coward escaped through a door that led to this world. Unlike Diophilus, however, who has entered through the door for centuries, we did not know what to expect of this world. I took it upon myself to learn your world so that I would be able to come and finish the will of my house. I have spent the sum total of one earth year preparing for my journey, and only a half of that time actually here on earth. You're not lying, are you? The larger of the two books you've seen is a record of Diophilus's time on this world. In it he calls himself father to the children of the night. Within its pages he speaks of man and the creature known as the vampire in great detail. I'm going to release you from your chains under one condition. Name it. You're going to read that book to me. You may find some of the contents within to be... It doesn't matter. It will not change my opinion of you, if that is what you fear. Do we have a deal, Mr. Meyerson? Yes, Miss Gallo. We have a deal. Now, if you would be so kind as to hand me my ring back. No. I wish to know the real you, Myrick, son of Meyer. I must not be seen in public in my true form. There is no one left to see you in this town but I, and I wish to see you as you truly are. I wish to know everything I can about you before we part ways, at which point I shall hand you your ring back. Now come, Mr. Meyerson, we have much to discuss. <laughs>